After five and a half years of a war to defeat fascism, Europe was bankrupt. Industry lay in ruins. Homes were in rubble. People struggled to survive. The Communist Party, which had fought fascism, attracted new recruits. The appeal of communism to young people and to students was that of a, a, a hope that it was possible to create a classless society. Many people believed that communism was going to create a better world, better than the one that existed before the war. This was the only party that you could join if you wanted to change the world. Europe's purchase of American goods and machinery redirected many Marshall Aid dollars back into American industry, fueling a post-war boom. Most people I knew felt that the generosity of Americans was a self-serving one in the sense that they thought of Europe as an outlet for their goods, as a market to export stuff. And we thought that we could see that in the types of things that they wanted us to buy with the money that they lent us. France, 1947. Workers at the Renault factory near Paris went on strike. When communist ministers backed them, they were expelled from the government. Several months of disruption followed. Strikes spread. In the fall, three million workers took to the streets. We had a lot of sympathy for the strikers because we felt that they were poorly paid and we felt that the government wouldn't do anything for them unless they put pressure on the government. Ministers feared civil war. The United States made it clear to Paris that there would be no martial aid to French industry until the government had the communist threat under control. Acts of sabotage culminated in the derailing of an express train causing 20 deaths. The strikers lost popular support. The disruption ended. The French Fourth Republic would now receive martial aid, $2.7 billion of it. But as well as doing good, Washington was preparing other tactics. In Italy, by 1948, the Communist Party, led by Togliatti, dominated the left-wing popular front. The Christian Democrats, led by de Gasperi, ran the government. In April, the first general election since the war raised expectations of a communist victory through the ballot box. I expected the popular front the union of all the parties of the left, to win the election. This union of the left had to get together to counterbalance the Christian Democrats and the forces of the right. Some Italians feared a communist victory. That election could have been a touch-and-go election between Italy saying on one side of the world or the other side of the world. First of all, I think it would have been a tragedy for Italy, but I think it would have been a tragedy for Europe, I think it would have been a tragedy for the Mediterranean, and it would have been a setback for America. In the United States, a campaign was orchestrated to persuade Italian-Americans to write to relatives urging them not to vote communist. 10 million letters were sent. Dear cousin Maria, have you thought what a communist victory would mean for Italy? It would be I tell terrible. You, Italy would be ruled direct from the Kremlin. Look what happened in Czechoslovakia. You must realize how serious the situation is. You should see what the papers are saying Please, here. Listen to us. I urge you not to vote communist in the elections. Your cousin, Luigi. 
fu un'iniziativa molto intelligente perché arrivava direttamente alle famiglie. It was a very intelligent initiative because it got through to the families directly. Mezzo secolo di emigrazione. After half a century of emigration, there were hundreds of thousands of Italian families in America. In America e quindi ricevere so, to receive a letter of encouragement from them, a letter stating that they shouldn't vote for the Communist Party, well, that was very influential. Letter writing was not enough. The newly created CIA decided to take the offensive. What the CIA needed was authority to develop a program of covert action. General Marshall knew that the situation in Italy was critical. The largest communist party in the world outside of the Soviet Empire. Not having an, an organization and knowing that the State Department could not achieve the things that he knew had to be done. He personally said, we must explore the means of getting authority to carry out a covert action program that would challenge this tremendous communist threat. This led to a debate within the young CIA. Did it have the legal authority to carry out covert operations? CIA lawyers studied the wording of the new National Security Act. If the president of the National Security Council, the head of the National Security Council, is the president of the United States. And if he specifically directs the CIA under Hill and Carter to carry out operations to help democratic parties, and if the Congress that was put in, if the Congress gives the money to support such a thing, then the authority is there. And that was the green light. The CIA then intervened. It began covert operations in support of anti-communists and of the Christian Democrat Party. I was in that branch of the CIA at the time that had to rush into the breach without training in covert action. And we had bags of money that we delivered to selected politicians to defray their political expenses, their campaign expenses, for posters, for pamphlets. Personally, I'm not aware of that. It was spoken of, but I don't know anything about it, because I was never directly involved in party affairs. The church, too, mounted a powerful campaign against the communists. Pope Pius XII was very concerned about the Communist Party. Not so much about their politics, he was concerned about their doctrine. And as Pope, Pius XII had to be concerned about what was happening in Italy at the time. A network of election committees was created. They worked in close parallel to the organization of the Catholic Church. I can say that all the parties envied our electoral structure, and especially the creation of election posters. In the rural areas, there were no cinemas. It was unthinkable at that time. So we had this idea. We sent some lorries out into towns and villages. And we projected the films at night, electioneering films. When we showed those films, everybody used to rush to the squares where the films were projected. They were always very crowded. They unleashed this tremendous campaign against the left, against the communists, against the socialists, and they told the most terrible lies about them. 
things out of this world. The church had a great influence over the people because 90% of them were Catholics and members of the church. At that particular time, I was a practicing Catholic. I was extremely rigorous about attending Mass. I never missed it. One Sunday I went to Mass and the priest was preaching from the pulpit and he said one sentence which struck me very deeply at the time. I still remember it. He said that the war against the communists was a holy war. Pope Pius XII and the Catholic Church had supported the fascists throughout their decades of rule. But the Vatican totally opposed communism. Just days before the election, Pius XII excommunicated many members of the Italian Communist Party. When I heard about it, I was terribly upset. To begin with, there was the fact that at the time I was engaged to my fiancé. We were getting married the next year, and this meant we couldn't get married in church. Pope Pius XII excommunicated us. Communists and the friends of communists. Gli amici dei comunisti. Not being able to marry in church meant I couldn't wear a white dress and have all the flowers, have the music playing. My uncle, who had been like a father to me when I was a child, couldn't even take me to the altar. Not to mention that as a Catholic, I very much believed that my marriage had to be blessed by the priest, who represented Christ on earth. And this was what I believed in. You know that Pius XII, in one of his speeches, said you are either for Christ or against Christ. And the Communist Party was against Christ. They were clearly atheists. So, it was a duty of the Pope and of the Church to protect their people. So there was no other protection on the part of the Church but to organize all the Christian movements to oppose the Communist Party. On April 18, 1948, Italy went to the polls. The Christian Democrats won a landslide victory. Italy would remain a member of the Western Alliance. The communist share of the vote was almost halved. I cried so much. We'd worked so hard to win this battle. It had been such an effort. I remember crying and crying and crying. The victory was even greater than we had expected. It was the only time when we, on our own as Christian Democrats, had an absolute majority in Parliament. The CIA too drew its conclusions from the election victory. Well, it was very gratifying. We didn't know at that time that we had carried out the first political action, covert political action program in the history of American intelligence that would be followed by many, many, many more. Now that Italy had elected to stay in the Western Bloc, the United States released a flood of martial aid 